Um, and it is six o'clock, so I'll call this meeting to order. Um, the first thing that I will want to discuss, and we first of all have a new member, Brenda Doherty, representing the Finance Committee. And I'm going to open the open the floor up to see if anybody else wants to be chairperson. If we haven't met in a long time. If not, I will continue. I just want to offer that up. No, no, I'll second that. You can be chairperson. I yeah, I'll, I'll nominate. Uh, I'll nominate Keith formally. Uh, <laughs> we've been. Yeah, I've been very happy with your leadership on this committee. So. Okay. All right, very good. Then do we need to make that a formal vote? I don't um, uh, sure, why sure why not? All right. So I have a motion from Betty. Um seconded. I have a motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? If not, I will do a roll call vote and I'll start with our Zoom members. Susan? Aye. Joyce. Aye. Brenda. Aye. Betty? Aye. And whether I say no or yes, it doesn't matter. So I will take the chair. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, very much. Okay. So the next topic in JP is present is Chief Kennedy to discuss training stipends for firefighters attending the academy. Floor is yours. All right. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to explain this. It's always better to. Uh, uh, here in person, that's <laughs> seated writing out of context. Um, we have three fire, or two existing department members and one prospective new hire that I would like to uh, give an opportunity to attend the State Fire Academy in Springfield. Uh, it's their firefighter uh, call volunteer program. It's a firefighter one two certification. It's a pretty involved um, uh, program that runs several months. It's two nights a week and one Saturday a week. Uh, for a total of 220 hours. Uh, obviously, uh, trying to budget or fund or come up with the uh, funding for the amount of money it would cost um, to send these folks to the training, it's uh, somewhat cost prohibitive. However, I do think that it would be um, appropriate to award them some type of a stipend for attending the academy. All of our members have um, they are firefighter one equivalency, excuse me. We have some members who have um, done more advanced training in the past, but I'd like to kind of raise the bar for our newest tires and um, have this as something that we want to set in place moving forward. It's a lot of really good training there, um, really good instructors. It's the same program that the career firefighters would be getting. So they're going to go over the same materials and end with the same certifications as um, their career firefighter program. So I'm proposing that um, I allocate some money and it would come out of my budget, either a donations account or around my operating budget um, to uh, award these folks um, a stipend for their time. And it's, it's something that a lot of other departments uh, do on a fairly regular basis for training that's uh, not required, but it is appreciated and uh, will benefit the town and the department. Um, I haven't come up with an exact number yet, but I'm thinking probably something in the thousand to uh, twelve hundred dollar range. Um, mm -hmm. That's per person. Per person, correct. And um, the um, you know to, to fund one person to go, I, I think would be somewhere around forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. And the reason we can get away with this is because they're not employees; they're volunteers. So if they were employees, we would we would have to pay for that whole cost, right? Um, I think that there's some career departments that do stipends for some certifications. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so, it does you know, like you're getting around labor laws that way or something like that. But, yeah. but the reason why it's it doesn't apply to us is because these are volunteers; they're not employees, right? Sure, and I, I would. Um, you know, obviously, the the stipend would be awarded upon their their certification. That would kind of be the the capstone, um, and it's something that uh, I'd like to have in place moving forward for uh, other new hires as we um, progress in the future. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or comments for me? Mm -hmm. I have, I have a couple questions. So sure. For the people who think 
about um, when would you when when do you see paying the stipend? Are you paying it upon completion of the the academy? What happens if somebody gets halfway through and you know says I'm done and we paid them the stipend already? What's what's the plan there? Yeah, they won't. They wouldn't. Um, I don't think the stipend should be awarded until they've completed um, the work. And um, there's a pretty strict attendance policy. That's something that the fire academy takes um, very seriously. But I think it would be appropriate to award the stipend. Um, upon certification. So when they're done, um, they're eligible to sit down for um, a test and go through this testing process. And um, they they will be very well prepared for it by the end of the fire academy. And would the town pay mileage and things like that? Do you, do you see that happening? Um, I don't anticipate the town paying mileage, but I would have my uh, staff vehicle available for them. Uh, some of the classes uh, will be in Springfield. There's a chance that some of them will be more local, uh, local department, um, depending on how many uh, call volunteers from this region, this part of the, the county rather, um, are participating. So they've been known to have, you know, some of the classes more locally. Um, and there's also a good chance that some of it will be online. Um, so it will be virtual live. Uh, the, the camera on top of they're doing it. So they're, you know, they won't necessarily be at the academy every day um, with the training is my understanding, but certainly, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make um, transportation available for them. We, we did it, uh, we've done it once already for a class uh, two weeks ago, it worked out well. What's the completion date schedule? Um, I, it would be sometime this spring that I don't have the exact dates. For completion? Yeah. If the, the, the class hasn't been uh, formally scheduled yet, um, but it would be uh, running from, I think I'm anticipating it running from February to um, early spring. So yeah, I, it's definitely this fiscal year. It doesn't, it doesn't bridge into next fiscal year. That was yeah. my question. Correct. Well, I mean, my comment is, I know John, previous chief has, Done what he could with his limited funds to offer some stipends and say a little bit at hourly rates for some of the individuals that have taken classes and things of that nature in the past. But obviously, this is a new scenario, and I mean, I support it. I, I feel it's the right step for this department to be yeah moving forward into. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, when I read the hours that they were putting in, the uh, devs, I, and the stipend, and I, I mean, I support it. Uh, that I'm this is my first 10 minutes on this committee, so uh, <laughs> I want to say too much, but I, uh, yes, and thank you yeah. for taking it out of your separate budget. But I support it, okay. I've taken part of it or yeah. figuring out how to balance it. I'm all for it, yeah, yeah. Um, I fully support this. Do we need to take a vote on this? Yeah, that was going to be my question because I I didn't know if this is like we do we don't authorize individual items in people's budgets, so I guess my question was for Brian. Um, I it, it I thought this was more an, a matter of information that JP was just letting us know, and and we don't particularly, you know, we don't we don't really have the power to to tell you what to spend your money on. But you're checking with us, and a vote could sure. indicate something like we generally support it, but it's not, we're not really authorized to authorize, right? Sure, but you, I'm just looking for an endorsement from. Uh, you're looking for an endorsement. Okay, good, good. I wanted to just see. And uh, and and Brian's head is not exploding from what I can tell on the screen. So, um, <laughs> I'll make a noise so the camera can find me, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Okay. So what kind of a motion uh, I, I, could we make for that then? Um, could I move that we endorse the chief's decision to pay stipends to the volunteers who complete their uh, this training? Sure. I second. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded to authorize the fire chief to- Well, not authorize. We're endorsing 
<laughs> the desire <laughs> keeps the decision. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call it to vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Brenda? Aye. Betty? Yes. And I will abstain since I'm a member of the fire department. So motion carries. Thank you, Chief. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your time. The finance committee does not want to see a new line item for your budget next year, okay? Uh, just, I do. Brenda doesn't want to say that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they meet. Understood. All right. Or having a different one. There is a training line item, all right? There is, yes. Okay, moving forward um, to review and discuss the proposed revisions to the personnel policies. Um, Wow, we've got a big package um, of new policy. And I really think at this point in time, from the little bit of reviewing and getting into it that I did, that um, at this point in time, we're certainly not ready to make any kind of recommendations tonight, nor are we looking to go through page by page. We'll be here for eight hours. Um, I feel there's a lot more um, that needs to be done before we can start to make decisions. Um, as I talked to Brian, the biggest part of about it is that there's still things that don't quite match up to what our current policy is. And it would have been better, in my opinion, if the policy proposed had alongside of it or something saying, this is what you got. This is what we would, what we, meaning the, the consultant, is recommending and go from there, but we don't have that. So, um, Brian, do you want to? Yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll add to that. Um, I just want to share my screen here. Um, so yeah, this is the, the long awaited revisions to the personnel policy. Um, and I, I think at the last time, and this would have been a while because this is about two and, a, two and a half months late. So I'm a little bit more disappointed that it's in the shape that it's in. Um, but I thought the last time that the personnel committee met and, and we had a discussion with the consultant, we were okay with with sort of um, not not so a rewrite, but you know, close to a rewrite, with the understanding that all of the, the all of the 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 local things that Waitley does be was were going to be incorporated into that document, um, and I mean, I going through it, I feel like we have something that's very boilerplate. Um, and there really, there hasn't been that that integration of of what Waitley does um, into this policy. So uh, I feel like that still needs to happen. I did go through it, and this is what's on what's on the screen. I I did try to go through and and sort of cross reference, um, you know, our existing policy and, and, and where those topics were talked about in the new policy. Um, and for the most part, my, when I, when I initially read through it, I was like, holy cow, this, it's not even, it's not even a, you know, it's not even, I, I won't say close, but it was, it was far off. But as I went through it a, a, a second time, um, and really tried to go through it methodically, um, a lot of the topics that we cover are covered, um, in the proposed revisions there's still some topics that are not, and there's plenty of things that that we need to have in our personnel policy. I mean, especially the appendix um, has a lot of, um, you know, comprehensive policies that we just don't have as, as a town. I bet she was gonna come back though and talk to us. Um, yeah, I don't think the job is done. Let's oh, okay. put it that way. I was a... um, 
And you, you know, there's a lot of things that, and a lot of extra things that, that I think that the town should have. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, I kind of had the same idea as you, Brian, that it did look very boilerplate in that sense, up to date. But I didn't realize the extent of stuff that we gave them that they didn't bother incorporating into it. So I, I hope they're not getting their bills paid yet. Yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen it in place. And one of the things I've, I I want to check on, and I'm I'm sure it was in the files that we gave them, was the so the the vacation the vacation leave section and sick leave section are are the the town's old policy. Um, it was a mock, uh, know, five years ago where we switched from the the lump, the lump sum to the right. accrual system. Right. Um, you know, and there, there's different caps on carryovers from fiscal year to fiscal year. Uh, there's there's nuances in um, comp time or, or or flex time or overtime. There, there's different nuances in the Whaley policy that aren't carried over. Um, like for instance, longevity pay is one of them. Um, that was the, the, the topic of discussion right before I, I came on board here. Um, and then really the, the section on compensation, and I'm just sort of throwing out examples here, um, and it'll lead into a, a, a future discussion, but you know, it just referenced the classification and compensation plan, which of course we all know we don't have, and I believe that the consultant also knows that we don't have. Um, and then there wasn't anything on, in terms of carryover from the establishment of the, the personnel committee, or what the personnel committee does, um, or how it's organized, or, or you know that stuff wasn't carried over. So, um, yeah, and I, it, it's also I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the. It's not organized how I, how my brain operates, um, so I'm still trying to wrap my head around um, how it's organized and, and how. What's the best way forward to meld these two things together? Because um, a lot of the a lot of the, the boilerplate policies we need, which is good, um, but it's just sort of pulling in those uh, things that Waitley does at the local level that are unique to Waitley. Well, you, at least as far as we know, unique to Waitley. Um, so that's my. That's my take on it currently. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's in any any condition to sort of jump into it and start, um, you know, editing sentence by sentence. I think we would. Um, I think we would waste yeah, our time. We've got to go. The town needs to go back to the consultant and get more work out of the consultant first. Yeah, and, and I'm happy to have that conversation with the consultant. Um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll bring up those items that I that I just talked about as as missing or uh, need to be added. But it, the other thing too is so much of what I started to get into deals with us needing a class wage and classification scale in that whole section, unless we're gonna totally take what she had proposed out of it and go back to what we have, we've got to come up with that. And consequently, that's another expense. Another thing that that I feel, and I didn't get into it, see if it was in there, it's gotta be is the Mass Equal Pay Act that went into effect in 2018. We have to, as a town, we have to ensure that we're paying all of our employees equal based on the responsibilities from one department to another. So that if one person technically is a grade six, and if another employee is the same grade, if they're not getting equal pay, we're in violation of state policy, state law that went into effect in 2018. And without a classification scale, we have no way of knowing if we're in violation of that law. Um, I really don't think we can discuss too much more. 
about it. What does everybody else feel? Hmm. Well, I agree. There's a tremendous amount of work, it looks like, that still needs to be done. Um, Brian, thank you for creating this document that at least identifies where you know, where they need to look. But I think, okay, frankly, it's a waste of our time to start going through what they've given us because what they've given us needs to be revised. Yeah. What's not obvious to me is what the next step is. Like we, I thought one of the things we were paying the consultant for was for them to take our current personnel policy and turn it into a new one that's up to date and has new laws taken care of in it. And it sounds like they haven't really done that job yet. And yeah. I think Brian said something in his email about um, you know going through it and putting those things in. But isn't that their job? Isn't that what we're paying them for? And I, I I I don't want to necessarily hand it back to them and say, hey, you didn't do this, this, and this, and then wait another two months for them to not do that. So I don't really know if it's realistic to say, good start, guys. We'll be looking forward to the real thing pretty soon, right? I don't know if that's very realistic, you know? That's, that's what I'm afraid. So I don't really know what a realistic new next step is. Uh, for me, I'd like to, I mean, one of the things when I was sitting back in my office in, in brain fog from having looked at this all day, um, I, I, I need to um, go through and create a full table of content so I can understand how it's organized. Um, that's one of the things that I think was, is missing. There's just sort of the whatever it is, eight or nine generic categories and but it doesn't really let us know like what's actually in there um and and just look at it at how it's organized and i think that'll help me to better see how it fits with ours um but we know there's certain things that that just aren't aren't right um yeah but so brian I, is that something that we should be putting on you to do or is this something that we really need them to send draft number two and you can point out to them things that you noticed but um is it, what like do you i mean yeah may, maybe the, the fastest way is if you do it because you know what you're doing and they don't seem to but you know I'm, i guess i'm not very impressed with our consultants here and um and I don't want to make it so that, well, they didn't do their job, so now Brian has to. I don't think that's very fair or good, and they shouldn't get a paycheck from this if that ends up being the case. Yeah, I guess I guess my intent would be to would be to put together sort of a uh, a list of once I see how their 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 thing is organized, put together a list of comments or corrections or edits and send that to the consultant. Right, but that's like you're you're telling them how to like they'll just incorporate those corrections and hand it right back, right? Because that's the that's the the easy thing to do, right? I'm I I guess I'm thinking they're a lot more like my students than than I thought, right? My students who would just like, oh well, I corrected that little thing you said without actually thinking through whether what they were doing was actually the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So does this mean that you've kind of given up on them ever doing the job we wanted them to do? <laughs> or or like what what your what's your thinking on that it is so i think overall i was uh, initially i was very negative about what we what we received mm -hmm. um i i've i've changed my attitude a little bit mm -hmm. um so what's good about it is that you know what we we needed updated policies and we needed a review of our of our policy um to know that it's to, the, to know that it's legal to know that it's it's up to date with the requirements and i think we have that what we're missing is the integration of the nuances of of our existing personnel policy and in, in how weightly operates i think that's what we're missing yeah, so they gave us a policy that would be not the same as what we had before, but it would be at least up to date.
but it would change all of our current policies if we were to adopt it. Yeah, but it, 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 it makes so many radical changes that just aren't what we're, we're not, I just know we're going to have to modify with some of the suggestions that she has put forward. Mm -hmm. They don't match up. They don't match up to us at all presently. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess my question is where does, who does that work and when does it get done? Well, and that's where I feel she should have said, this is what you have. This is what I recommend. And then we can look at them side by side and say, okay, we see your point. We'll make a change or no, we don't like that suggestion. We're going to keep what we have, but at the moment we don't have that. Yeah. Right. Like would have been nice if it was annotated. Yes. Right. Mm. To say I'm, I'm recommending, you know, like for some, for some situations, I think wait, we will do right two hours comp time. Right. Sometimes it's one and a half. Sometimes it's one, depending on the situation. And it's just it. There's things like that just aren't carried into it. That's the bottom line, right? I think we've identified the problem. Just the how do okay. we get to the solution? Is right. So what? Um, yeah. So what is the next step towards the solution? It's not obvious to me. Brenda, um, I just wanted to say so I. Thank you for the existing policy because I didn't have that. Maybe I could have found it on the website, so I should have thought of that. Um, but I did go through it and and I made notes on it, but I didn't know the existing and I had no history with the consultant. So I'm not trying to say they did anything wrong. So I just don't know. But just going through it, I'm like, would this even apply to Waverly? It's 109 pages. Somewhere just talking, you know, the state or the town of Berlin, you know, it just seems like it's a cut and paste. And so I made notes, which are totally irrelevant in light of this conversation, but it just looked to me like this could just be a lawsuit waiting to happen, not today or tomorrow, but somewhere down the road, we have this 190 page policy. We're not even really aware, or the employees aren't really aware. We're not following it. It shouldn't apply to us because we're, we don't have, yeah. So that that's my thought. It's too long. I mean, I didn't need you. I mean, I'm interested to hear that you have the original policy that's one or two pages, but to go from whatever it was to 109 and then not have it hit really key things up with my reaction. No. And to Keith's point, I feel like there needs to be a dialogue about proposed changes of what do we as a town want? and making sure that that's what's reflected. We're not, you know, it's not a dictate in that respect. It should be a conversation. I feel she should come back. She was only here that one time. And we discussed it just that time. Yeah, she has done phone interviews with oh. department heads. But it would be nice to have her come back to tell us all that she you yes. know, received so that we know, you know. Totally agree. Well, yeah, I think we're at the point where Brian, you I'll reach I'll reach back out to her and, um, okay. but yeah, uh, it's it's hard and it would be hard for the personnel committee to adopt this if he if the the changes that are being proposed are identified. I mean, you have no way of knowing. I, Keith and I have a, are a little bit more familiar with it, but in yeah. like longevity pay or, or how comp time is paid out currently or that, that type of thing, it, you have no way of knowing what the changes are and how can you vote that. I, I have no idea. I mean, another simple thing was um, that I picked up on was the probation period. It's a different than what we presently have, but then it's we also have a policy in place for the police department for one year probation period for part-time officers because Jim requested that because it he needs a longer time frame to evaluate an employee that might only be working once or twice a month. And after 90 days, he didn't feel it was enough. And so he, we have a one-year policy in place for the for a part-time police officer. And this would eliminate 
that. So we've got a lot of intrication to get done. All right, so I'll reach back out um, and have a conversation with her. Okay. Figure out what, what the next step it can do. All right, then moving on, the next item is to discuss the process slash method for assessing employee compensation for fiscal year 2025. And is that more or less total compensation or for like calls? Um, so it's more for, so I, so I put it on there to have a discussion about um, really the salary survey, right? Um, because it's unlikely we're going to have a, if that's the way people want to move forward, class, we're not going to have a classification and compensation right. study done prior to that. Um, then there was a lot of, there was a lot of hand wringing last budget season about, I mean, call aside about how, and there's always been different comments made about how the personnel committee determines and compares wages um, for each position. Um, so I guess I'm just looking for direction as to what you want staff to do for fiscal year 25, um, which it's already October, so it's coming quickly. Um, we could continue the same way that we have done it. Um, I think last year there was a lot of there's a lot of uh, conflict over the cola, um, but there's also a lot of uh, I, I think misunderstanding, and I think I need to just go back through the process with the finance committee about how you know how these decisions are are being made um, because it, it's funny even with the classification and compensation plan, there's a salary survey done of comparable communities that sets the salary ranges. So we don't ever get away from it um, in terms of looking at, at what comparable communities are doing. So um, we might just have to do it less frequently um, if we have a, a, a classification and compensation plan. Um, and there's pros and cons to you know, having one of those. Yeah, it certainly would be nice to come up with something that we don't, spend a lot of staff time doing because staff time went through and had to revamp and do things keep going back and trying to make more phone calls and getting the information it's been, it takes a lot of time for the staff to do that um and at the same point in time it was there was a lot of friction between the finance committee and the personnel and the select board this year over that and so it would be nice to have to come to a better um, agreement so to speak as to how to evaluate positions on a, on a yearly basis so uh, i know that many years ago we more or less would only look at the surrounding towns, primarily the ones that just bordered Waitley. And at that point in time, the finance committee would make comments, well, you can't compare Waitley to that town or that city, if, you know, like if we use Greenfield or Northampton. And so we went back to the drawing board at that point in time and said, okay, what, what are some of the, the things that we should be comparison? comparing to and we came up with things like per capita income and property taxes and things of that nature and plugged that kind of data into the into a database and came up with other communities that we weren't looking at before and started using them and which I felt was the best thing to do at that time, but here we are years later and we're still being, making, having comments made that, you know, shouldn't be comparing Waitley to those communities. I 
Yeah, so uh, unless unless we, we feel a need to to change what we're doing this year, then I I assume we'll we'll, we'll keep doing what we're doing. Um, but then there's also that other discussion in the background about a classification and compensation study. If that's the way uh, that I guess the town wants to go, um, but I mean we we should be thinking that it, it's probably going to take. You know, six to eight months, six to ten months to have that study done. Um, so yeah. it wouldn't be too early to start planning for FY twenty six. Should it? Would it, it? Is it advisable to reach out to the finance committee and do we want to we try to meet together, for instance, or discuss that? Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing that out there. Yes, Joyce. I, I'm not sure. I mean, present company excluded. If there's a lot of people on the finance committee who want that to be a productive conversation, um, I think, um, we're looking over the. I mean, Brian sent us two documents. One was seventy six pages, and one was sixteen pages. So you can guess which one I looked at. Um, but even that one. Um, I mean, the thing we do every year is actually a hard thing to do. That's what the consultants who worked for Clinton said. They said the hardest part is trying to find some comparable salaries because every town defines everything differently. So it reading through that made me appreciate how, I mean, however we want to try and do this, it's really hard what we're trying to do. So to me, it makes perfect sense to do something like, like they talked about a point system where jobs uh, are classified according to things like how much responsibility do you have? How much supervisory work do you do? And, and all of those things. And to get someone from the outside to look at that, let someone from the outside try doing all that salary research. Um, it will cost some money to do it once, but I think they would do a better job than we would. And I say that grudgingly because we just hired a consultant who disappointed us on this other thing. Um, but if uh, we could maybe check in with uh, towns like Clinton, and I can't remember the name of the other town for the other report Brian sent us. But if, if they have a group that they were happy with, if we could find someone we could be happy with, it might really be worth, it might be worth the cost to be able to have that for not just the finance committee, but for you know all the citizens, for the select board, for anybody, for the employees, for crying out loud, to be able to say, hey, this is why we think your compensation is fair. Make your case if it's right. if you think otherwise. I think I think we should always have the make your case if you think it's otherwise option. But I think one of the problems with the way we do things now is from maybe from the employee's point of view, if I um, if I try to sit in that chair for a minute, is you know we we have people who've worked for many 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 years and are very good at their job, and it's their experience that makes them good at the job. But we're comparing them to the average from some from some group of towns that are demographically similar, perhaps, but um, maybe we're comparing them to somebody who's only got a couple years of experience. Um, so I think, uh, the kind of thing they described in that report from Clinton, um, uh, would, would help with that. Um, it might not be perfect. It's probably not going to be perfect, but I would advocate, we try and move forward with that in parallel, but I don't, I think it's too late to do that for this year. Right. And that's kind of what Brian was saying earlier. We, we might need one more year to muddle through. Um, but if we do something like try to hire a consultant, my question would be, what's the cost and do we have a way to appropriate that so that when we meet, let's say this time next year, we actually have something like a compensation study done so that we can actually go in and, and do something that is like fair and based on data. That's my whole rant. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. I think um, 
as both of you have said, it, it's kind of too late for this year to make a change of that magnitude because we want to make sure if we're if we're changing to that system that we've had time to to get it done right. Um, and we want to make sure if we do look into that that we do it right, meaning getting a consultant who we can work with. Then at the very least, I feel this committee then should make a recommendation for to the select board and the finance committee to investigate the cost that it was going to be to do this and bring it to either a special town meeting or annual town meeting. Yeah. And the other thing that I would say we don't have to agree with the finance committee. I mean, life is easier when we're all on the same page, but part of the reason for having multiple committees is to have multiple perspectives. True. Yeah, and, and when I meant, you know, suggested having a joint meeting, it wasn't so much that we come to an agreement prior to like budget season, it was just, it, it created there was so much friction near the end of the budget season last year that I'm just trying to prevent our staff because I know listening to as the employee rep, I know how um, the morale and the employees coming to me and talking to me and the late the time and what they were having to put in and then basically having feeling like what they just did was a waste of their time. I'm just trying to prevent us going down that same path again. I feel we do what we need to do and we recommend. And if it goes to them, I don't think we get together like finance to see how we do the numbers. And I think that's important to see how much work the office does to help us out, to show what other towns are doing. I think it's very important that they see what we do to, to help out the town. Okay, well, I think then to summarize it, it's we, the committee, we should go to the, our first step is to go to the select board then. Does that sound agreeable? Yeah. So maybe let's put that in the form of a motion. Um, okay. So I, I move that we uh, go to the select board and the finance committee if necessary to look into funding a salary study for the town of Waitley. Uh, Second be used uh, for determining the next fiscal year's uh, employee compensation. Sorry, I jumped the gun. Second. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll put it to a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Brenda? Aye. Betty? Aye. And myself, I will pass it unanimous. Do we have any unanticipated items? Do we have minutes? What? Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, we yeah we'll minutes. do that. Thank I, you. Um, did everybody have a chance to review the minutes? I know Brenda wasn't on the committee, but the remaining. Do I have a motion? I move that we accept the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to accept the minutes from the last meeting. Susan. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Brenda. I mean, Betty. Aye. And myself. <laughs> aye. So that passes unanimously. And now I move to. Um, anticipated items. Anything that you have, Brian? Does anybody else have anything? I don't think so. Okay. Hearing none, the next item is uh, next meeting date. Um, I, I almost think that we really 
can't do too much until we start to get some kind of response back from the consultant. Yeah, and I'll ask, and we'll, we'll start requesting the salary information also. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think we should aim to meet in, in November, definitely. I don't want this to, you know, I don't right. want to push this too far. Should we aim for like um, four weeks from now, five weeks from now? That would be the 9th or the 16th of o of November. Right? It's one, two, three, four. Four weeks would be the 16th of November, I think. Thursday. That's a Thursday. Yeah. That's a Thursday. Yeah. I cannot do Thursdays usually. <clears throat> oh, okay. I teach on Thursdays. Um, the fifteenth is a uh, Wednesday, um, okay. and then the next week is Thanksgiving. So presumably, earlier on the week would be better. But um, if Wednesdays are okay, then I'd say the fifteenth might be a target. Works for me. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Preventatively, we'll say the fifteenth. Okay. Six o'clock work for everybody. Okay. Um, and I guess we're called for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, let's do a roll call vote. Susan. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Brenda. Aye. Betty. Aye. Myself. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Nice. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.